All right, hi everybody. Welcome to Chess for Rookies. I'm back, tanned, rested, and ready for you at home. There also are people here, if you can call them people. Okay. Uh, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold, and you're not. Uh, as you all know, I'm opening a chess center in Atlanta uh, in September. But before I do that, um, I'm doing chess videos here, probably about 10 this month. Now, we don't have Ben Simon, but we have his replacement, Rufus and or Doofus, okay, AKA the scab, okay? And uh, we're gonna make some videos. Now this is the two o'clock class, twice as good as the one o'clock class, okay? I would make fun of the one o'clock class nonstop like I always do, but I think we have a ringer in here. I think he was in both classes. So the one o'clock class is great. Okay, so First position we're gonna look at is this one. We're gonna look at seven positions today because seven is lucky, right kids? Let's see, some of them are like nodding their head diagonally. I think they think they're bishops. Okay, now in this position, material's equal. Both sides have all the same everything, but white decided it was better to be a piece up than not be a piece up, okay? The kids are scratching their brows in a vain attempt to understand the situation. And white played the move, knight takes e5. Bam! Recommended by Emerald. And now, as you kids all noticed, white is up a piece. None of them noticed it. Okay, just like you at home. I think they are at home. All right, so my question to you in the audience and you in this audience is how does black get his piece back? Now, before you give the wrong answer, no, no, give the wrong answer later. I'll give you one of the wrong answers that you can give me your wrong answer, okay? Most of you are like, ooh, ooh, and the bathroom's over there. You're like, knight takes knight. I got my piece back. And then you start doing the wave and everything. Okay. But actually, white just takes that, and you're down a knight. You're all talking a badge. You got nothing. Okay. So black has to do something else. Black wants to win back his knight, but taking it right away doesn't work. Now, who wants to give me the wrong answer? You pretty, seem pretty adamant. All right, you. Incorrect. Anyone else? Oh, wait, you didn't say anything yet. Yeah. F5 is correct. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, you don't want to see a doctor or anything? No? Okay, so F5 is correct, or as Donald Trump would call it, incorrect. Okay, that's fake news. F5 attacking the queen, right? Now, does white want to lose his queen? I mean, you want to lose your queen, but I mean the guy who has white here. The guy who has white does not want to lose his queen. I can prove it. I was white. This game was played in France before you were born. Hey, can you make more noise there? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, you can? Yes. Wow. Okay, so that's actually not one of the kids. That was our special guest. In fact, when he was a kid, his mom and the doctor said he was special. Okay, and his brother works at the chess club, and he used to work at the chess club. So, Okay, this video is going to be shown in a week, so yeah. I don't want to lie to them. All right, now, is it possible for White to move his queen and keep a defense on his knight? You with the wrong answer. Um, queen, queen, queen See, that kid listened. He gave the wrong answer. Good job. Queen d5 does defend the knight. Unfortunately, the rook can take your queen, followed by lots of crying. Right. And if the rook takes your queen, you have to go to the one o'clock class. You have to go back in time. It's not easy to do. Or you could go forward a week, but you probably wouldn't do that because at one o'clock next week, you'll be busy buying me Father's Day present for the two o'clock class. So you can see how you wouldn't do that. Yeah, okay. So anybody else have another answer? Anyone? Bueller? No. The answer is, you were sort of like, nah, that's right. You can't, there's nothing you can do. If white moves his queen, there's nowhere he can move that defends his knight. So I was white and I'm as greedy as they come. So I took something. What did I take with this queen? What did I do? You with the right answer. Right, you meant b7, so it was still right. Queen takes b7. And then my opponent took the knight, as we discussed, and I took this pawn. So white's up two pawns, but white didn't castle yet. Okay, and white's queen is a little funny. So the computer engine actually says this is equal. Although whites have two pawns. And I won. Hooray. Okay. But it was very, very, very important that black played f5. 
If he didn't play F5, he would be down a knight. Instead, he wasn't down a knight, but I still won. So what is he doing? He's crying, right? That's because he's French. All right, let's go to the next game and see if you guys do even better with that. Can't do worse. All right, and this is the game Rufus versus Doofus. I think uh, you were playing your brother or something. All right, this is a game I played a long time ago in a country that no longer exists. True story. Yeah. Uh, when I played the game, it was called Czechoslovakia. Now what's it called? Nobody knows. Anybody? You with the wrong answer. Czech Republic? That's correct. It was the Czech Republic. I also would have accepted Slovakia, but it's the Czech Republic where the tournament was. Okay, now this game was played before Barney the Dinosaur was famous, but in, even so, we both tried to checkmate each other. I checkmate you, you checkmate me. Lucky for me, he's the worst player in history, right? No? I think that's what happened. All right, now in this position, it's white to move, and I was white. If it's black to move, black would play queen a1 mate or rook a1 mate. He'd probably lose on time trying to figure out which way to mate me. But it's not his turn, it's my turn. Bam. So what move did I make where I try to mate him before he mates me? Okay, you at home. Incorrect. You in real life. Rook takes g4, check. That's what I played. Okay, now we're going to vote. Okay, you can vote for a number or you can vote for Pat Buchanan. Most people who vote for Buchanan do so by mistake. But you can still do it. Okay, black has to get out of check because I said so. Black has more than one way to get out of check. I'm serious. Right? Let's count how many ways he can get out of check and then see who's right. You guys can do it too at home. So you're black and you don't want to be in check. You have to get out of check. How many ways can you do it? Raise your hand if you know. You. Three. Three? That's pretty close. You. Four. four. Five. five. Three, four, five, five. Does somebody have an answer that's not three, four, or five? Okay, everybody says three, four, or five. I have no idea. I'm the teacher. I don't know. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. There's three king moves. That's probably why some people said three. That you can block with a knight, that you can block with a queen, right? If you block with a queen, you might lose your queen, right? So probably he didn't do that. If you block with a knight, then every move is checkmate. Queen b8, queen c8, and queen d8. All checkmate. Which one do you like? Let's do d8. It's close to the king. Now, most of you don't think that's checkmate because you belong in the one o'clock class. But it's actually checkmate. The bishop stops the king from moving and the rook stops the knight from moving. So that's checkmate. So did my opponent block with his queen or knight? No. If he plays king f8, this is also checkmate. So he didn't do that either. So what did he do? Thanks for asking. He plays king h7. I'll take this pawn with check. Then this is checkmate. And this is checkmate. And if you want to play knight g7, the computer won't let you. See how it won't let me? You know why it won't let me? It's pinned, right. The bishop's pinning the knight. So my opponent didn't do any of that. Okay, now it's time for my two sweetest words in the English language. Default. What move did black play? The only move I didn't look at. What's that? King h8. That's the only move we didn't look at. And then I gave up. Oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't. I won. Is that better than giving up? If, if for you at home, the class is like, I don't know. Okay. So instead, I put my opponent in check. Did I check on b8, c8, or d8? What louder? d8. In fact, they all win, but d8 wins quick. Quicker is better because I wanted to go eat. Yeah, the dollar was strong then. And check, check. 1990. Yeah. Okay, my opponent played the best move. 
Can any of you find it? Or is it too hard? They all said it was too hard. What did Black do? He's in check. What do you think? I got a point better. King H7. Now I'm going to shock the class. Did you all wear your shock resistant clothes? Because it's going to be shocking. You ready to be shocked? White has made in one move. Even I'm shocked. And I played it. You in the back with the right answer. Yeah, I saw him play before, so I knew he had the right answer. Queen H4, checkmate. Confusing half the kids in the class. What? And the guy who's filming it. Okay. Checkmate because the knight's pinned, as was pointed out before. So I checkmated my opponent, then he checkmated me, so it was a draw, right? No. No, ridiculous. Right. Okay, so I was very lucky that game. If we go all the way back in this position, was that a good move my opponent played? Rook takes A4? No. Yeah, it was good for me. Yes, because I checkmated him. If his rook was on the back row, protecting his king, I couldn't have done all those queen checks that mated him. So he shouldn't have played rook takes A4, then I checkmated him. He thought he was going to checkmate me, but he was not quite right. Close. Okay, how come I'm white one game, black the other game? Who, who made this file? Okay, this is a game I played in Reykjavik in 1990. Is Reykjavik your favorite city? Yeah? Somebody raise their hand, tell me where Reykjavik is. You, incorrect. Nice, okay, there's a capital R. Yeah, Reykjavik. Okay, it's in Iceland, your favorite country, right? What famous world chess champion died in Iceland? It's the only one you heard of, that helps. He's like, I heard of somebody. Yeah, you're like, I heard of Fisher, him? Right, Bobby Fisher. He lived the last year or so of his life in Iceland. And since he was a chess player, how old was he when he died? All chess players have to die at this age. It's a rule. Hmm? 80? Where'd you get the number 80 from? You just made it up? There is no such number. It goes 79, 81. <laughs> Kids. I'll give you a hint. How many squares are on a chessboard? And that's how old he was when he died, 64. And he, he died in Iceland, and Iceland is where he became the world champion. Because he beat your favorite world champion to become the world champion. Who did Fisher beat? You with the right answer, you looked really confident. Ah, oh, can they hear that? Can they, can they hear what he said? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I like your answer, you showed Moxie. You. Ah. Oh. All right, let's vote. Which answer is worse, Morphe or Kasparov? Hold on. Kasparov was alive when Fisher became world champion, but, but he was nine. Hmm. They're, they're equally bad answers. Give, your, give yourselves a hand. Yeah. No, but he raises, he was like really confident. All right, you with the right answer. Ah, oh, your answer is almost right. You're so close. You named a world champion they never heard of. That was good. Nobody knows who Fisher beat. The people at home were like, ooh, me. I'm not calling on you. The correct answer is Boris Spassky, your favorite player. No? Now for a trick question, is Boris Spassky alive? That's why it's a trick question. He is alive. See, I tricked him. They were like, well, how could he be alive? Yeah. He's about 80, like you said. Yeah, yeah, boo, that was good, I like that. Boo, he's alive. Okay, now, this game was played in Iceland in 1990 by me, okay? And my opponent played queen a4. And I was like, yes. And he was like, quiet, I'm playing. Notice, I could take his knight, but then he would take my queen, and I would go back to the one o'clock class. I would be in the audience, right? Isn't queen takes knight a terrible move? Okay, so my opponent played queen a4, and he was like, queen takes knight, still a terrible move. I still take your queen. And I was like, oh man, I wish his knight wasn't there so I could take his other knight. And then I went like this, hmm. Now today, I would never figure out the answer, 
But in 1990, I was good. Were you good in 1990? Hmm? What kind of excuse is that? Okay, so what moves did I make so I could kick this night out and then take this night for freeze? You with the right answer. I played g5, bam. Notice I'm attacking his bishop because I said so. Did he let me take his bishop? What's the only safe square for his bishop? G3. G3. Hey, now I can attack his knight. G4. Yes. You see how this knight is defending that knight? See what I'm saying? And then that knight's attacked. I'm attacking all his knights. Right? And that's because I used to live in Ann Arbor, so I knew how to work on my knight moves. Nothing. What? Bob Seeger? Come on. Night moves? You never heard of Bob Seeger? No. I've heard of Bob Seeger. You never heard of the song Night Moves? I couldn't name a song, no. That, that seals your fate. Seal. Yeah. Seal. He never heard of Seal either. Yeah. Oh, all right. I thought somebody else was the worst person who ever lived, but you're, you're given a fighting chance over there. All right. So uh, even in the song, he even says it's funny how the night moves, but he's talking about something else. All right. So if the night moves, I take this night. So first, what's the first thing he did? The first thing. Say it again loud. He cried. That's right. Yeah. What's funny is he sort of did cry here. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Yeah. I played G5 and he put his head down and shook his head a long time. Because he's like, man, I'm losing a piece. That's terrible. I'm a grandmaster. I can't lose a piece. Now, what's funny about this game is after he lost a piece, he quit chess and became a lawyer. You can't make that up. Because that happened. And what was his name? I gave you a lot of information about him. Now you never heard of him. You never heard of him at home either. Ferdinand Hellers. You got nothing. Okay, so go to the internet and type in Ferdinand Hellers, and it'll say file not found. All right, so now I win a piece, so he resigned later. In this position, was Queen A4 a good move? No. No, well, it was good for me, because I won a piece. Yes. That'll teach him to undefend his knight. Boo! Become a lawyer. Okay, next game. Hooray! Ah, this is one of my favorites. This is just the right level for the class. If you were all 700 points better. Okay, so in this position, I have a bishop and a knight, and my opponent has a rook. Otherwise, everything's the same. Okay, what's better, a bishop and a knight or a rook? A bishop and a knight. That's the two o'clock answer. Good job. Okay. And my opponent, he thought he was winning. He was like, I'm going to win. And he played rook b1, attacking my queen. Should I let him take, his, take my queen? No. No, I'm going to move my queen away because I don't want to lose my queen. Yeah, but let me, I'm trying to teach over here. Okay, so I'm trying to think, what's a safe square for my queen? Is that a safe square? No. By here. No. Are any of these squares safe? No. no. Man, if I move my queen to those squares, he's going to take my queen. Right? Do I want to lose my queen? No. no. So I have two squares, C2 and C3. Those are the safe squares. Unfortunately, let's go to one of them. He plays rook takes B7 check. How do I get out of check? D6, somebody said. Then checkmate. And white has the advantage because white won. Also, I could go to C6. I could. And then checkmate. Or I could give my queen away. Those are all good choices. I could lose my queen or get checkmated. Okay, so if I don't move my queen, he takes my queen. If I move my queen, he checkmates me. So he was like, oh boy, I'm going to win. Look at me. And I'm like, quiet, I'm thinking. Lucky for me, black is winning. He has one move that wins. Otherwise, he loses. No, what a world. Okay. And the reason I'm winning is his king is trapped in the corner. Perfect for getting checkmated. Unfortunately for me, he's got two rooks defending the back row. So I can't checkmate him. 
but I can try to checkmate him. I can't try to checkmate him, I can try to try. You with the right answer, you're too confident. Rook A3 says the person who saw this before. What? You deny everything or you deny nothing? He's like, what does deny mean? Have you seen this before? What? Yeah, no, of course. Okay, so I played rook to a3, bam. And then he started crying. Yeah, exactly. When I teach chess, teach chess? When I coach at the World Youth, all, they're all kids and their opponents are all kids. Makes sense. Then when the game's over, I analyze the games of the American kids because I'm the American coach. And when they come up to show me their game, I said, did your opponent cry? 50-50. Yeah, world championship, half the kids cry. They must have read my book. Cry like a grandmaster. None of them read it. Terrible. Okay, you guys must have read my book, Don't Read a Book Like a Grandmaster, which I also, yeah. Okay, so what happens if he takes my queen? I take the rook and then I win, hooray for me. Let's say he doesn't take my queen. What's the big deal? The big deal is I'm going to take his rook and there's nothing he can do about it. Do you feel bad for him? No. Yeah. Now, did I get lucky and I just found this move or I saw it a long time ago? You'll never know because I'm probably lying. No, I saw it about five moves ago. Yeah. Okay, then I went here and he's like, no. So he like checked me once. And then I think I went here, or did I go here? I forgot where I went. I moved my king somewhere, then he gave up. And then he read my book, Give Up Like a Grandmaster. Okay, it's a really short book. You know why? It was written by Nigel Short. Okay, next. Now, this game is very interesting because it's played by the two best Peters in the world. If you want somebody named Peter who's good at chess, look no further. Peter Laco and Peter Sviddler. Okay, if Sviddler had lost this game, he would have been on the roof, right? Sviddler on the roof? No, the kids got it. No, you didn't get it at home either. Anyway, in this position, Black has a good position, but he made the worst move ever but he had a good excuse. They were doing something you've never heard of. They were playing blindfold. They weren't looking. So they weren't looking at the board and they would just say their moves out loud, like pawn to e4, knight to f6, and they would remember the position in their head. Because of that, they didn't play perfect. Okay, and this is a good example of that. Black played rook g5 and eventually black won, okay? That black's position looks pretty good. However, white should have won. White has a winning move here, but since he was playing blindfold, he didn't see it because he was blindfold. So he didn't see it, no, nothing. Okay, a couple of kids got it. Okay, so what's the winning move for white? And actually, this is a very interesting, uh, what's it called? Word, vocabulary word, chess term. It's called the clearance sacrifice. Okay, you're clearing something out of the way, like your throat, right? No, you got nothing? Wait, who said they see it? No lying in my class. Rook to b that is a clearance sacrifice, but I don't take it. When you play rook to b6, you did it so you could play queen f7 check, didn't you? Say so, yeah. But if you play rook to b6, I can defend f7. For example, rook f8. Why don't you threaten queen f7, but force me to take your rook? You with the right answer, because I gave it away. Yeah, rook g6, bam. You're supposed to say, I meant g6, I just said b6 by accident. I'll believe you. Yeah, there you go, good. Notice that it's check because I said so, right? Now in this position, white wants to jump over his rook and play check. But even though he's rated 2750, that's still not allowed. You gotta be at least 2800 to do that. Then you can do what you want. 
So he played rook g6 check. Now his rook's not there anymore, so he can play queen f7 next to move, right? Rook g6 check would win the game immediately, but he didn't play it. Then after the game, they were like, dude, you could have played rook g6 check. And he was like, dude, what does that mean? I speak Hungarian. Okay, so if you take with the pawn, then you get checkmated, bam. If you take with the other pawn, it's the same thing, but you save a pawn. Queen check and mate. If you take with the rook, it's the same thing. Okay, easy to analyze and mate. Oh, it won't let me. There we go. Now you don't have to take the rook. You could play king f8. That's pretty safe. Oh wait, it isn't. Or you could play king h8, and now you actually have to find a good move, not your specialty. Can you find a good move for white? Recommended by me. For those of you at home, one kid's raising their hand. One. And there's like 400 kids in this room. You. Correct. Queen f6 check, the winning move, also known as checkmate. Right? Checkmate's a good move. Oh, you're taking notes. I'll let you write that down. Oh, you're taking notes at home? Checkmate is a good move, unless you're playing me. Okay, so after rook g6 check, Peter Laco would have won. He didn't play rook g6 check. He defended his bishop. Boo! You know what's funny about that? Before black played rook g5, that wouldn't have worked. Let's say black played a silly move. That's pretty good for a silly move, threatens rook c1. Okay, now rook g6 doesn't work because I take with the queen and my queen defends f7. Hooray! But he played rook g5, allowing white to play rook g6 check. Did white play rook g6 check? No. No, so he lost. Aw, too bad. Did he forget about it now? Probably not. Yeah. All right, we're at our penultimate problem. There's one more after this? Oh, yeah, that's right, with Alejandro. Okay, now raise your hand and tell me who the world chess champion is. You. Right, now raise your hand and tell me who had white in this game. You. Right, what are you just quoting yourself? Right. Yeah, you're looking at that too, right. So, and the player with black was me. Hooray for me, or maybe him. Okay, so two months ago, possibly three, I can't remember, I played Magnus Carlsen for the Pro Chess League Championship. Which team won, my team or his team? You, his team. No, you. I know that my team won because the trophy's at the chess club when you walk in, and it has my name on it. You can go look after class, I can prove it. Okay, our team won. That means that I beat Magnus, right? No. No, you know what happened when I beat him? I had to wake up and apologize. None of the kids, none of them. None of them got it, nothing. Nothing. Okay, so in this position, you'll notice white is a pawn ahead, correct? It's true. Okay, and my rook is really well placed in the corner here. That way if I resign, they're already set up for the next game. Okay, so I activated my rook. Now Magnus Carlsen, being the highest rated player in the world and the world champion, knows something you don't. It's a secret. If you checkmate your opponent, you win. Yeah, so he was like, how do I checkmate this Feingold character? He's like, well, if I check here, Ben will escape. If I check here, Ben will escape. If I check here, Ben will take my knight. So he was like, how do I make this guy? He's like, oh, I have it. When I go here, white plays white. Black plays king f5. I won't let him play king f5. So Magnus played e4. Now, if he could move again, he would play checkmate. The truth hurts, right? So I put Magnus in check. Did he checkmate me? No, no he got a check. Now I can't check him anymore. Darn, one check, that's pretty good. Okay, so how did I stop Magnus from playing rook d6 checkmate? How did I defend d6? You, at least three years old, at least. Yeah, yeah. I could play bishop e7, I could. Now, he wins my bishop with a series of moves. 
He checks me, and I play king f6 because I have to. Then he checks me again, or he could play e5 check. And I have to go here, and he takes my bishop. <laughs> okay, so I stop checkmate without losing my bishop temporarily. You with the right answer. Ah, oh, I said right answer, and you said rook d8. Why are you making me look bad in front of my people? If rook d8, that's not defended as much. Also, you forgot to stop checkmate. You forgot. Okay, also I could take the rook, but checkmate's better. You with the right answer. Resign. What? Do I ever lose? Well, maybe this game. You. Rook b6. Bam. Okay, so I stopped all his rook d6 mate. Okay, and he was like, man, this guy's stopping rook d6 mate. I have an idea. Knight d4 mate. Is that mate? Why isn't it mate? Because he takes it. So he made a move where I couldn't take it. What did he do? How did he stop my bishop from taking that knight? Louder. E5. Now, if it was white's move, knight d4 is mate, right? You agree. And also, pawn takes bishop wins a bishop. So he's threatening pawn takes bishop and he's threatening knight d4 mate. So what's the first thing I did? Cried. You. Bishop takes e5 is the best move. I didn't play that, but it's the best move. Then he takes my bishop, and then I cry. Again, that's double crying. Yeah. So instead of giving my bishop away, and instead of getting mated, what did I do? Yeah, I resigned. Yeah. And Magnus is like, this guy's a grandmaster? Yeah. And I was like, quiet. Rawr. And then I said, Magnus, which team won? Oh, snap. So there was a four-game match, and there were four of us. All four of us played four games. Magnus got four points. The rest of his team did not get four points. The rest of his team played 12 games, and they got three points. Three out of 12, solid. So they got seven, because four plus three is seven. Just a second, one kid's making sure I'm right. Is that right? Yeah, okay. He said I was right. And if it's 16 games, four times four is 16. If they got seven, what did we get? Ugh. Oh. Right. I asked the German guy and he said nine. So we won nine to seven. Nine's more than seven, so we won. Yeah. And what did our team win? How much money did the Pro Chess League give us? Pro Chess League. Do you know the Wait, hold on. Do you know the answer? Yeah. Well, what's the answer? $20,000. 20, yeah. No fair. Sounded fair to me. I got destroyed and got 20000 Great. Did I get all 20000 or did they give some of it to Wesley So? Has anybody heard of Wesley So? Wow, half the class. He's the second highest traded player in the world, although he's third now. But he was second before Norway. Kramnik second. Big switch. You know. Okay. Now, normally I would end the lecture on a game I lost, but I had a really funny win two months ago against Ali Alejandro, but don't call his name. Hey, I said don't call his name. All right, now as per usual, I had a fantastic bishop on f1 that can't move. Okay, here we both have a queen, rook, minor piece, three pawns, and a king. It's one of the first times in my chess career we both had a kit. No, I always had that. Now, one thing you didn't notice is that black is in check. So he moved his king. Smart. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now about seven or eight moves ago, he offered me a draw. And I declined. And we got this position. Now white's winning. White has one winning move. It's too hard for the one o'clock class. It's too hard for you at home. But maybe you kids can find it. What's the winning move for white? I made this move that he started crying. Well, he's a grandmaster, so he was crying before you were born. Now, what's funny about me and Alejandro is I became a grandmaster at the age of 40. You ever heard of 40? Actually, you probably haven't. Okay. 
he became a grandmaster at the age of 15. That's younger than I was, right? That he's not, he'll never be 40. It's not even close. Terrible. And he's from your favorite country because half of you have heard of it. Half of them or less than half? Less. Man, look at the guy's insulting you, right? He's right in front of you. Costa Rica. You should have heard of Costa Rica because of the last World Cup, right? Kids are like, what? What's a World Cup? What sport am I talking about? You. Soccer. Remember Costa Rica? They did well. Yeah. They have like seven people in the whole country. But they still feel the team of 11. That's good. Good job. Okay. So Ala Alejandro is from Costa Rica. So what city does he live in? St. Louis. Yeah. Everybody lives in St. Louis. Even him. Most of you do. Yeah. All the grandmasters go to St. Louis because we have chess here. We have like this light and we have a camera and we have a board. In Costa Rica, n n nothing. He's got dirt. Yeah. So he was like playing chess in the dirt. They're like, wow, you're grandmaster. Go to America. Is that what happened? That's, that's, yeah. Okay. So what move did I make? And then white's winning. It's a term you've never heard before. It's a pin. Oh, now somebody has it. Who has it? Yeah, whoever sees it, raise your hand. What's the answer? Bishop takes c4. That's risky because he'll take my bishop and I'll cry. He could take it with the queen or with the rook. That's a dangerous move. Too dangerous for me. I played a slightly safer move, only slightly. What did I do? Because taking advantage of a pin. Although that answer actually was the right piece, just the wrong square. Well, who sees it? What? I can't see the lights in my eyes. Yeah. You with the right answer. Bishop h3. Did he take my bishop and, and then I took his queen? Why not? That sounds good to me. Okay, so he doesn't take my bishop, but I'm attacking his pawn. He has a lot of defenses to his pawn. Zero. That's a lot. No. Okay. So he's like, I can't defend my pawn. Wah. So he played rook b7, I think. I took his pawn and he checked me. Now we're going to see how smart the two o'clock class is. How many legal moves does white have? You. What? A thousand? That's an interesting answer. Three, you. Four. four? Three. 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 Can, can, you, can you walk these people to the one o'clock class? Like go back in time somehow? Yeah. You with the right answer. The most common answer is 1,000. All right, no talking ever again. Like when I die, no talking. You. Two. Okay, so I'm in check because I'm in check, and I have to get out of check. That's why you're the two o'clock class. I could take his rook, or I could move my king. I made the move you wouldn't suspect. So figure out the move you wouldn't suspect, and then say that one. That's the right answer. You. Uh, right, king h2, that's what I did. Bam. Rook takes rook also wins, but king h2 is better. Now most of you are confused, you came in confused, but now you're more confused. You're like, why'd you give your rook away? What are you doing? What's going on around here? Now, white has one winning move, but it's really winning. Extra winning plus tax. What's the winning move for white? It's a double discovered triple Lutz. You, bishop h5 check. Notice how it's check, right? And I'm attacking his queen. That's called me winning his queen, right? He didn't want to lose his queen, so he didn't do that. He played queen e1, threatening queen h1 checkmate. What a mean guy. So if it was his move, he would win with queen h1, and he'd also win with queen g1, followed by mate next move. Okay, luckily, it's my move. Otherwise, I would lose. By the way, I can stop both checkmates 
Queen G1 by taking his rook. And then he mates me over here. Check and Queen G2 mate. So there's a lot of ways to lose in chess. I decided I'd win. That sounded like a better idea. So I played Rook A7 check. And he was like, oh man, your queen and rook are mating me. And I was like, quiet, we're playing. Notice how he's in check, right? If he goes here, checkmate. If he goes here, checkmate. If he goes to G8, then I have many checkmates. I could play bishop takes knight or queen h7. I don't know what you prefer. I think queen h7 is quicker, so we'll do that. And then checkmate. So after rook a7, he played your favorite move. It's not really a move. Resigned. He resigned. Right. I mate you. You don't mate me. All right. And as Gene Wilder said at the beginning of Young Frankenstein, class is dismissed. Now you can clap.